Mr. Uh, Ezenwa, uh, in your own perspective, what do you perceive as democracy uh, in uh, the uh, contemporary Africa? We, we, don't, we want to analyze, to look at what better suits for the continent Africa. In, in your own opinion, what do you think is this democracy that we are looking uh, to, to strengthen as countries uh, head to the polls in the months ahead? Of course, uh, your country, Nigeria, is the first to start the election calendar this year, 2023. It's okay to look at uh, democracy uh, first, not just as Western democracy or uh, the type that we have. Um, Africa had uh, democracy. Africa had practiced democracy. So because even the definition of democracy is still a bit challenging for even scholars as we speak. So it depends on the part of the history of Africa that you are, um, from which time you start reading the history of Africa in talking about um, democracy. So if the conversation is about West, the Western democracy that we are currently um, practicing, which um, places a lot of premium on periodic elections um, and multi-party democracy, fundamental human rights, and such other, you know, um, if you like, uh, values that are, we are espousing, then uh, democracy is finding its root in, in Africa. And then there's the variant that is also tied to democracy that is tied to free trade, uh, that is tied to markets. So those those are currently going on. So, um, but the Western democracy must always be defined first and foremost by whether you have strong institutions, whether you have political parties, whether you have free and independent electoral commission, um, and that is the electoral management body that is truly independent, uh, whether your judiciary can be said to be free, uh, free uh, judiciary. So um, Africa is beginning to see a, 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 a grips. I think the existing electoral system across Africa are the best and of course do you think they meet the aspirations of Africans? I think more and more. Uh, sorry I had to I had to go off. I had some technical issues. Um I think more and more um most of Africa is embracing the infliction of technology into the electoral process. Uh, Nigeria is um, um, almost getting to that point where it has a, a bimodal uh, system. That is uh, where manual is working hand in hand with uh, technology. Um, but all of that said, I, I think uh, the last, uh, the last uh, panelist made the point about the fact that democracy, whether it is electoral, uh, must work for the good of the people. Uh, all over the world right now, there's a debate as to whether um, democracy is working for the majority of citizens or not. Um, so the, the fact of the matter is that um, in Africa, we need to make a choice between whether we want to practice democracy or we want to practice a civilianized form of dictatorship civilianized in the sense in which poverty hunger disease disempowerment lack of infrastructure has disempowered the people to the point even when they are voting even when they are standing up to vote you need to really be clear whether they are voting their choice and their conscience because in most of african countries um, individuals have become governments. They are the ones providing for majority of their people. The schools, if you where they have schools, they are not free. And if they are not free, if people have to pay, and majority of your citizens are not able to pay for education, and there are individuals who, because of their connection to the state, become alternative governments in those environments. They are now the ones who 
uh, eventually play roles of government. And so, uh, even when you have people queuing up all over Africa, especially in the country to vote, yeah, you, you need to be clear whether those people really are within their their choice. So it's not about what 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 has been introduced. Like I said, technology. There's a fetish I'm making a ceremony of viewers in Nigeria right now, and uh, how viewers will improve the credibility of the election. It will, but at the end of the day, people own those polling units. Polling units are owned owned in the sense that. Uh, in Nigeria, when you see politicians talk, they say, go and I don't know whether that is what it is in other places. They say, deliver your polling unit. They tell, they tell politicians, they say, deliver your polling unit. When they say, deliver your polling unit, what do they really mean? Why should they, an individual be the one to deliver his polling unit if people will make free choices? So I, I was talking about the need for, uh, importantly, strong political parties. Um, the term party democracy within the political parties are, are weak in the sense that most of what you have is also in those political parties. They are not democratic. So the leadership recruitment machine with the political parties ordinarily should be have not been able to uh, you know, play that role in a way that guarantees these choices that um, we are talking about. So what kind of political parties are we having in Africa? Are we having political parties in which there are truly members or in which there are deep pockets who support, who fund the parties. Are the government, uh, the government in power, are they using resources from the states to fund those political parties? Are political parties, people paying membership dues in these political parties in a way that they can raise their stakeholders uh, within these political parties? So if you have political parties that have been hijacked by uh, executives in most of these African countries, uh, especially in which even founding um the people in my country for instance somebody wakes up in the morning is a member of uh, a political party in the evening has joined another one the fluidity of that movement uh makes a mockery of of um the idea of a strong um political party then the issue around independent electoral members uh, in many of the african countries their nature of the nature of their appointments uh is is anything but independent in many of the African countries, their finances, their funds are still tied to the apron strings of the executive. And um, in many cases, you know that he uh, who pays. Even when they tell you that um, they are now, uh, like in my country, they tell you they are on first line charge. Um, but the, the nature of the appointment makes it difficult for members of the conscience to actually expose challenges when they have one. Because at the end of the day, they, they have loyalties that are beyond them, you know, that are not loyalty to the people. So if you do not have independent um, electoral management bodies, you don't have strong political parties, and your judiciary is still uh, weak, uh, it's, it's just um, a match to more improvement. That's, that's the way I'll see it. I'll be thinking that um, African democracy is on a course of improvement and that different stakeholders have responsibility and have rules to play to deepen it. Um, for us to be able to have you know, political control, it means that we must make democracy work for people in a way that those who are challenging democracy will have no argument. Uh, if water is not running for the majority of the people, if the schools are not functioning for them, if there is no health provisioning everywhere, if the security and lives and properties of citizens are not guaranteed, at the end of the day, they will begin to worry about the kind of when uh, you are practicing. So, but all in all, I think it pays Africa to be democratic. It pays Africa not to have one one party state. It pays Africa not to have uh, an individual consistently being uh, in government for 20, 15, 10 years. I think periodic elections is important. And then as we test these systems, we, we, we begin to strengthen them. That, that will be my uh, contribution for now. Le monde, c'est nous.